Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Socially Numb Podcast. I am your host, Richie Leahy. Last week, we went over a little bit of 4K video, and I talked about on uh, the new camera I got, uh, Panasonic GH4. It's been out for quite a few years, so it's not something that's like a brand new piece of tech. But whenever I get technology, I kind of look at it in the grand scheme of things. Right now, television's not even broadcast in 4K. You can barely even see any video that's in 4K. And so there's no need to be on the cutting edge. Uh, if, I, if I'm just doing client work sometimes on the side or whatever, I don't need to have the most expensive piece of equipment because most people can't even see that content in 4K. And so what I've been doing is I've never actually owned up until last year a good camera because when I do, uh, whenever I did like consultant work or tech work on the side uh, for an agency, normally they had like their own cameras. So they just lent out and I would carry around the DL, a DSLR camera, uh, which is one of like a professional type camera. It's one of the biggest digital cameras in the world uh, selling wise. And so DL, DSLR cameras are very popular and they're mainly made by the big two, Canon and Nikon. They make, I think they sell most of them. Uh, you can kind of debate that. Some of the numbers might come in and out, but those are the big, the big two uh, camera producers. And so what a DSLR is, it's a sensor uh, that's in a digital form that's equivalent to what you would see in 35 millimeter film, which is what most of the major Hollywood films and stuff were shot on back in the day. And so they wanted to replicate that to get uh, the camera to give photos that were high quality in a digital realm so that you didn't have to go and get film printed or do your own Lightroom type stuff. And so darkroom type stuff, I mean, Lightroom is the Adobe program. But now with the digital focus, a lot of camera companies have been pushing, pushing out uh, these DSLR cameras uh, for a decade now or so, maybe even longer than that. And the one mark against them are that they're heavy, they're big, uh, because the sensor is quite big. And one of the plus sides on that is the bigger the sensor, the better quality photos you're going to get. But at some point, uh, you're going to reach a point where it's going to be too much. It's not really going to matter if you're doing print photography. And so most of the companies I've worked for just had a DSLR that you could take if you needed to do photo work for either a website or whatever. And at that point, most uh, computer monitors only have, even if it's 4K, uh, you're going to have the resolution on a DSLR that you can crop in and out and get whatever photo you need even if you're not the good, that good of a photographer, if you can't actually frame the photo well, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to have that luxury to crop it. And so with a larger sensor like that, you're able to crop your photos down into a size that you need. Um, but personally, if I was doing non-client work, there was no need for me to have a camera that size. Uh, cell phone cameras have been getting better every year. And so whenever I would look at getting a camera, I bought digital cameras years ago. And they just didn't have the sharpness in that I wanted compared to a cell phone. I was able to get photos on the web. Most of my stuff is web projects. As a uh, programmer, I do like software stuff. It's only going to be viewed on a computer monitor if I needed to take a photo, if a headshot of someone. I wasn't physically printing these out. And so there was no need for me to go and invest heavily into the, this equipment to get a DSLR or lug one around. Uh, but... Last year, I became a father, and so I wanted to get a camera that was sharp that I could use to do uh, prints for family to pass out along, uh, just of the, my family and stuff like that. And so I started to look into them. I still didn't want the push to a DSLR camera because I knew how big and bulky they were, and I know that gear adds up. So when I started looking at the market, I had a couple different options. Uh, from sensors as you get into the, the to the technology side of things. So the big full frame sensor that's in a DSLR, that's going to give you the best picture quality. 
Uh, but if you're looking at some of the newer ones, now they have smaller sensors. You can get like a one inch sensor. Your cell phones even have a smaller sensor inside. Then there are some other big ones. Uh, Panasonic and Olympus, they got together and made one called Micro Four Thirds, which is about a 4-3 resolution or, yeah, ratio and image quality. So it's like 4 by, thir- by 3 pixels, uh, length by width or height by length or whatever. And so that's one of them you can get. Fuji produces an APS-C sensor, I believe. Uh, it's some acronym like that. I don't know off the top of my head. And that one's a little bit bigger than the Micro Four Thirds, but it's still considerably smaller than a full-frame camera. And at first, they didn't have the resolution to compete with the DSLRs, but in recent years, uh, within the past five years or so, now the sensors have um, improved so much due to the increase in technology that whenever you're viewing shots on a web, you can sometimes even like the iPhone 6 uh, and up have a camera that look that looks great. So you could take those, put them on the web, and you can't even really tell that that wasn't from a professional camera, mainly wide angle shots. And so I didn't even get any digital cameras um, up until like last year, like I said, most of the time I would just carry my phone on me. That would be how I would take photos for clients or whatever if I needed a photo of a building. An iPhone would look work great. I know uh, even like the Windows phone had a great camera in it that you could just take wide angle shots. Now, if you're taking photos of people, that's where you can really tell a difference. And so I wanted a camera that I could throw in my bag. I didn't want something big and bulky. I didn't want to have to get uh, a lens that could fit all. So last year, whenever I went into it, I talked to some photographers, got some feedback, tested some out, uh, and I really liked the Fuji X-T1. It was, again, there was a newer model coming out, and it's already out now. Uh, but whenever that happens, if you buy the previous model, you can get it pretty cheap. They start to sell them out. You can get one used, picked one up. And I know it was a 16 megapixel camera. And again, the resolution for a screen, it was perfect. If I was just doing photos, I could do um, stop motion uh, using photos and create a 4K video based off the resolution of the camera. And it was very sharp. And I actually just got one lens. It's a 35 millimeter lens, which is their equivalent to uh, 50 millimeters in 35, uh, the standard 35 viewing angle. So it's pretty much what I think Alfred Hitchcock, he recommended like that was his favorite lens length because it's kind of standard close to the focal length of what you would see from your eye, uh, like zoomed in or out. It's not like a wide angle lens. So it's pretty good that if you're looking at a scene and you go to take a picture, it's going to come close to like giving your exact view of the situation. And so I wanted that because I can get close-ups. Uh, if I wanted to do portraits, it works well for that. I can also take a step back and do street photography or like documentary style, which is what you mainly see on the web. And so I invested in the camera, just got the one lens. I didn't even get the fastest version of it because I wanted to get a waterproof version, which was or I guess weather resistant or whatever Fuji labels it at. So I got that camera last year and it's been great. I've used it on most of my web work, started to do some photography on the side and it's been a great camera, a real workhorse for me. Now it had some quirks and some limitations due to the digital nature. I believe the X-T2 went ahead and took care of some of those issues and it even added like the 4K video. The video on the X-T1 uh, is pretty bad and I started to do some web stuff if you looked at my socially numb uh, videos that I've done I think on YouTube I put up already those ones are all shot with the X-T1 and it left a lot that I wanted that the camera just wasn't able to go ahead and get focus wise even some of like the motion stuff there's motion blur you can see some other artifacts that are unwanted when you're doing video. And so it really left me wanting. It's great as a photographer, as a photograph uh, camera. I can go ahead if I'm just doing straight photography, throw it in my bag. It's very durable, made of metal. I usually shoot manual, so I don't have to worry about like a lot of the knobs and stuff coming in and out. Uh, it's a great focus lens. And I really only have that one lens for the, fo- for the Fuji. 
So it's been great. And I've carried that camera around for a while. But as I started to do more photo and video things, or video instead of the photo, I wanted a camera that could handle 4K. And the same thing happened again. Last time I got the X-T1 as the X-T2 was coming out. They purged them. Uh, big discounts on them if you look online. And now this year, the same thing happened with uh, Panasonic. So they had the GH4, which was a great, it was like the first digital camera that offered 4K video. And like I said, at this point, if you're getting into 4K video, you don't. I didn't need to invest in like the best camera. Most of the stuff I shoot is going to be on a tripod. So I didn't have to worry about like the image stabilization or anything like that. All I wanted was a camera that I could set up, pretty much put in manual focus, and sit and do some things without it like uh, hunting around. Even if I could do uh, some autofocus if I'm holding up objects or whatever, if it was able to get those kind of in focus, not a lot of movement. It's not like I'm running around or having people run in and out of the scene to do autofocus, which the Fuji I tested and it didn't really work. Uh, there was like one video I did for the Raspberry Pi where after I did it, I watched it and I saw that it was going in and out, in and out. So I just took a photo and put that in the video instead uh, because I wanted to make sure that I didn't have that constant hunt in the video because it looks very tacky. And so I've been looking at cameras and again, the same thing happened. Uh, the GH5 is announced. It has in-body inst uh, stabilization. So great improvement for handheld. If you're going to do handheld shoots, uh, there's some other formatting stuff. For the 4K, you can get a little bit better quality or whatever. But at this point, like I said, most uh, devices don't even show 4K for me. So it was something that I wanted to, if I was going to invest in, I would have preferred to kind of stay in the same sensor range uh, because how it works is if you have a camera, so if I would have went with DSLR, most of their lenses you can get a converter and use back and forth between camera brands, no big deal. The Fuji set lenses are a little bit bigger, high quality stuff. Like I said, my pictures are very sharp. When I take them with, with the X-T1, I'm very good. There's pretty much a knob for everything, so it's not like I have to. I can let the camera sit. I don't have to like remember exactly okay, what are my buttons here? I could set up the quick keys for things that I need. And it's pretty durable. I can just go ahead, click the knobs. It has the focus and all the other stuff on there that I would need, um, the exposure. Everything showed through like a histogram on the on the touchscreen. Actually, it's not even touchscreen. So I don't have to worry about that either. And so that's a camera that I just throw in my bag. Pretty small profile. I can actually clip it onto my belt using a carabiner and walk around with it no big deal it's not that obtrusive and it's something that i can pull out with the fixed lens it's fast i don't have to worry about it like zooming in and out it's not a big heavy lens that like juts out that i have to worry about it like getting caught on things if i'm walking around with it on my hip uh, but it's a great camera and i'm happy to have it but like i said i wanted to invest in something that could give me 4k video and so i was looking at it i knew the gh4 was going to come out Boom. I wanted something that had a wide angle lens. I like the Leica lenses. Uh, Leica is a ma glass manufacturer, one of the top notch lens manufacturers in the world. They work with Panasonic to make native lenses for the GH4. And so basically I looked into it. My idea was to get the same thing, probably about the same aspect ratio. They have it now with the micro four thirds. The crop sensor is a little bit different. So I like if I buy a 35 in the Fuji and I buy a 35 in the uh, for the GH4 on Panasonic, it's going to be zoomed in a bit because the sensor is smaller. So it's, it's going to see a little bit smaller of a picture. So it's going to look like I'm, I'm zoomed in on what I'm looking at. So I'd have to go with a smaller aspect ratio. So right off the bat, I knew I wanted a Leica lens. They had the equivalent of what I have on the Fuji, but I wanted something a little different because I wasn't sure how the photo quality would be. And I knew the video, I could go with a wider angle aspect. Like I made a 15 millimeter lens, which would have been about the equivalent of a 30 millimeter. Not great, like what the movie, like what you would use for movies as you'd probably want like a 28 or like a 35 or something. Uh, but it's close enough that it gives me a nice angle uh, for video. And so I went ahead and got that lens. It's a fixed lens, just like the same thing for the, that I had for the Fuji something that I could just keep on if I wanted to go through and do like a street video, throw it on a tripod, set it up, 
take some video of the streets. I did some tests on that last weekend. I talked about it on last week's podcast. And so I started to do more tests and I was about to go and get, because my one thing was I wanted to know if this camera was going to be as sharp as the Fuji. Now it does have a smaller sensor. So I'm aware that, Hey, in low light, I'm not going to get the same quality. And even zooming in, I've noticed that I don't get the same exact um, detail as I would on the Fuji, which is probably due to the sensor. But at this point, the lenses are much cheaper for the Panasonic. So like a Fuji lens is going to cost me if I'm going to get uh, their standard high quality lens, it's going to be close to a grand a lens, which is tough if I'm just doing this on the side or for family or whoever, I want a photo that can print. And it's, they're both cameras are 16 megapixel that I have now. So I figured I could have two, you know, on and off backup cameras. That's why I wanted the different lenses at first. Because if I had to do a wide shot of a family or whatever, I could just throw that one out. Get it. If I'm just doing prints, great. I don't have to really worry about cropping it or anything like that. Because most of the shots I try to frame as if I'm not going to crop them. So I rarely crop any of my photos that I put online. So if you go to my site... Uh, and we're going to talk about my site anyway in a little bit. But if you go there, you can see with the photos, they're pretty much all native. I don't crop it. I like to do like a documentary style photography, uh, street photography, where whatever I see, that's what I get. And I know some people like doctor them up. I don't do a lot of Photoshop either. I haven't got into like black and white or any concept photography yet, as I'm just been playing around with the different cameras. And so I went ahead, got the wide angle lens. But the one thing that I needed uh, to fill out my kit right now between the two cameras was I wanted a zoom lens because that just like a medium range zoom, something that would knock out most of the other lengths, something that uh, I could go ahead, get a little bit closer uh, aspect or viewing angle that I would with the with the Fuji at the, at the equivalent of 50 millimeters. So I wanted something that would be a little bit more zoomed in that I could zoom in farther. I didn't want something like a super telephoto lens for wildlife or anything like that because most of the stuff I was looking at was doing like sports photography or something. I took the Fuji out to one of my brother's basketball games. I know I talked about his videos on here before and I'm probably not even going to release a video this week. I'll, we'll see in a second. But, uh, but I went out to my brother's game over the holidays uh, Christmas and stuff and I took some photos using the Fuji because that's my best zoom lens that I had at the time and it just didn't work for sports there were some low light issues or anything like that and I know basketball is a whole different beast because you were inside so I'm inside lighting's bad anything like that uh, so I wanted to get a zoom lens and I've been debating because right now Fuji they have that sensor it's a little bit bigger but if you buy a Fuji lens you mainly can only use it on Fuji. I know Sony uses the same sensor. You can probably go ahead and get an adapter for different things, but I really like to use the lens how it's decided because I've, I've tested some using adapters and things, and usually you lose some things around the corners or edges of your photo. You lose a little bit of the focus there, and you start to get some weird artifacts. I know that's not the case all of the time, but that usually happens whenever you're using lenses that are a little bit bigger, or I guess you can't even use ones that are smaller uh, than your sensor. And so that's what I would do. So this four micro four thirds intrigued me because the camera is about the same size as the Fuji, but the lenses are much smaller. And so they're much more portable because that's what adds the weight to your bag. And that is what takes up more space. So I can get a couple different micro four thirds lenses, throw it in my bag, keep the main Fuji as my travel camera, that's always in my little laptop bag because it's great for that still street photography. I really don't need more than 16. I know I could upgrade to the X-T2 to get 4K video and I've thought about that. But at this point, uh, there's still a recording limit, which was the reason I got the GH4 in the first place. I wanted a camera that I could just set up and let it record. And with the battery life on the GH4, outstanding. I've charged it once in about a week and a half. Two weeks, actually. And that was because the first time, like, well, yeah, I've charged it. Whenever it came, I think I charged it then. And then I, I ran it all the way down because I like to, like, stretch the battery when I first get it. Charged it all the way up. So I've had one really good charge for besides the one that it, whenever it first came. 
So I've charged it one additional time. And I've been out shooting thousands of pictures already. Uh, uh, probably an hour or so of video I've let run on the camera. And it hasn't even died again. I'm still at two bars after um, I went to a softball game this weekend to test out the camera in the low light. Softball is not as fast as baseball pitching wise. And so I just wanted to see how that would compare uh, before I took it out to a baseball game. But that's what I was looking at. So I looked at lenses. The Micro Four Third lenses are much cheaper and you have much more option. So I've decided to take a gamble on that. I'm like, well, if the Micro Four Thirds, I know the GH4 isn't best known for image quality. It's not great for photography. The Fuji's great for that. I do know that they upgraded the sensor too, so that in the long run, if you're looking into getting a digital camera, um, I don't really need a DSLR. I don't think most people do. Even if you're printing in magazines, I believe uh, you're only going to print 8x10s, which the Fuji is great for, by the way. And I still recommend that if you want just like one or two lenses and you're doing like small work and you even like family, I could have got the, the same lens that I have, the 35, and got a zoom lens and been pretty much standard with the Fuji. Wide angle lens, maybe. So I could probably get away with doing three lenses just for general stuff. Uh, but I figured I would like to tinker around with video and get a lot of different aspect ratio. So most of my lenses I'm going to get additional will prob probably be in micro four thirds unless, I mean, I don't buy lenses all the time. Uh, but I would like if Fuji would go ahead and unlock unlimited video and have a little bit better battery life because right now the battery life does not even compare on the Fuji. I would have already had to swap out batteries because I have two batteries for the Fuji because I've had to swap out in the middle of the day. And I thought that's what was going to happen with the GH4 uh, because I only have one battery on it. And I was assuming that I would start shooting softball in continuous mode, firing away thousands of photos. And just like after the second or third inning that it be that it's dead. But no, it was a workhorse. It actually worked all the way through two full softball games. And so I've been I've been very impressed with that and very impressed with some of the images that I've gotten too. Because I just went with a cheap Olympus uh, zoom lens. I think it's a 50 to 140, which is about the equivalent of so like right now the equivalent lenses I have are a 30 millimeter, a 50 millimeter with the Fuji, and then this zoom is probably like um, 100 to 280 maybe. So it's a pretty good uh, medium range zoom. It's not like a super telephoto, but it does get me pretty close to the action. Actually, it might be 300, 150. Or maybe it's, yeah, I don't know what the low end of the lens is, but I think it's to 150. So it might, it might be 40 to 150 if you're looking for the same lens. Uh, but it's great. I think it's a Zuko, maybe. I think that's the name on it. But I got it. It was only a couple hundred. I think it was like a hundred something dollars. And it was a great lens. I've seen photos of people. Someone had a Flickr album that had photos that they had taken with it on an Olympus camera. And I thought, well, if I can get the same detail from it, uh, from the GH4, even the, just the sharpness without the crop. Because I don't, like I said, I don't like the, the crop the images anyway. Because I like to frame them exactly how I want them while it's happening. And so sports is a little different beast, as I learned when I took the Fuji out. Uh, the low light in the gym just doesn't equate. And so this week, being a Michigan guy, uh, the Michigan Wolverine softball team was down in Raleigh here for the ACC Big Ten softball challenge, uh, which is like a pickup off the Big Ten ACC basketball challenge. And so it's something that started last year, and I thought it was a good opportunity because there were like games all weekend. It's not that far away. And so I went in and saw, I went on Saturday and Sunday, so two days ago uh, recently, so I'm still getting the images up online. But I just took the zoom lens, just took the GH4, and I had a full bat. actually I didn't even have a full battery. It was at two bars all weekend pretty much, because my idea was, all right, I have some, some, uh, some battery left. I knew it was an evening game, we went at three o'clock on Saturday, uh, we missed the first game. So we went in the afternoon and I assumed that the battery would die just as the sun was setting and then I wouldn't have to worry about like any high ISO shots. But instead I go ahead, fire through a bunch of the game, uh, take a bunch of photos, works out well. Uh, I was trying a bunch of different autofocus things. I didn't try too much manual because I wanted to try to get the girls running and hitting the ball and pitching. 
I know pitching manual probably would have worked well, uh, but I, I was messing around with some of the settings where I had, and I set the autofocus to one of the function buttons, held it in for continuous focus, turned on the continuous shots, and so the camera, as long as you held on the shutter, it would just keep taking photos, which is why I thought it was going to kill the battery. But no, Panasonic must have figured something out because I know a lot of DSLRs I've shot with over the years have had awful battery life. This thing was a workhorse. It may be because it's a brand new battery, uh, but normally batteries need broken in. So it would take a couple charges before it gets its full max capacity. But this is great. Like I'd feel comfortable going with, with just two or three batteries to a shoot. Uh, even like if it's a wedding or something and not have to worry about it running out because you can get the handle too. So I assumed I was going to have to buy at the minimum four batteries and get the handle that has the extra battery in it. But at this point, after this weekend, I'm content with even not having the extra battery in the handle, uh, the extension grip, just because if I was going to go do sh uh, a sports shoot because of how well it worked out. Now, I will say that the GH4 is a little bit noisier than the Fuji if you're zooming in. So if I was going to crop it, yeah, I think that's just a, a limitation of the micro four thirds. I would like to see, I haven't seen image tests yet because Olympus just put out a 20 uh, megapixel uh, version of the sensor. And that's what the new Panasonic GH5 is going to use. And I think they might have had another camera in between that tested it out before it went to the GH5. And with the X-T1 being perfect for what I do, if the 20 megapixel version of this Panasonic camera and if it adds the sharpness that the Fuji has or even beats it, it's great because I might have the perfect camera for me. Because a lot of people said, oh, you only use that if you're video first. But I could see myself shooting sports with this because it's lightweight, easy to focus. I was, I was using low ISO. I had it down to 100, I think, at one point. And then I think I bumped it up to 200, depending on if the sun was out or not. Uh, because you can, I use the extended ISO range on the GH4. So you can really get in there, and that means there's basically no noise. Yeah, if you zoom in to a certain point, so you could probably crop it a good bit uh, of a photo. But whatever, if I have a 16 megapixel. Now, I haven't printed these yet, and that's my final test. I've printed a bunch of the Fuji. At first, I had some issues getting the colors right. And the prints aren't that expensive, so I printed some at like 4x6. I think if you just print them at Walmart or whatever to test the colors, and then you can go ahead and order some online to, at better, higher quality places just to see how the photos turned out. But everyone has been very happy with the photos that I've passed out from the X-T1. And so now I'm going to have to get the test on this Panasonic GH4. But if they look like they do on my monitor, it's going to be very sharp. And I'm excited to get some of these softball pictures. I'm just going to print out some just to see what they look like. Because I think that that's going to be a great thing to have. Uh, just to have, as even as a backup camera. Because technically they're both uh, 16 megapixel cameras. So they can handle most professional work. A lot of companies want you to use at least 24 so that you can crop if you need it. And that's the one thing that I found, the GH4. If I needed to crop these photos, uh, I'd probably be... A little bit hesitant uh, but with sports I uh, the games it's like a marathon so I have three hours to get a handful of shots most if I'm doing it for a magazine most uh, magazines aren't gonna have more than one or two sports shots maybe three or four if you're doing a, an article and if you're gonna go ahead and do it like even on a sports gallery you really only need 20 or so photos and so when I have thousands of photos from the weekend, I can pick and choose. And if I'm going to try to get to 20, I might even limit it this shoot because it's my first one to a little bit less than that to pick. And I'm going to put them up online so you can see uh, the quality that I got from it. And this is like the older model. This camera came out in 2014. So you can get it for kind of cheap now under a grand. So don't be uh, worried about the quality because if the GH5 comes out, my only worry with that is that the battery life that I've been gloating about isn't going to compare. And my worry with that is because of the image stabilization. And now I'm sure you can turn it off because it, with sports, you're going to need a high shutter frame. I think I was using a thousand, thousandth of a second maybe uh, to shoot with today. You can usually use 500 or so that freezes the uh, shot pretty well. But you really don't need the image stabilization shooting that fast. 
yeah, it's great for camera whenever you're only doing like 30 seconds uh, or 30 shots a second or whatever. And because they're going to be right there and you need it. But for actual sports shooting, you really don't need it. Maybe on the longer lenses, but I think a lot of them have it built in. And so you can go ahead and use that. Uh, but that's my only worry with the GH5 is that I had no problem with sports. I've never really had them shooting before. But again, at that point, I've always used a DSLR that wasn't even mine. And some of the ones too, because if you're working for other companies and they buy a camera, they usually don't upgrade. So I could have been using DSLRs from like 2006, 2007. I know I've used models like that recently for shoots. Uh, for people, they're like, here, here's our camera. Uh, I look at the memory card. It has a one gig memory card in it. And I'm like, wow, this is going to be full. Or I'm going to have to really pick and choose and delete photos during the event. And some of them don't even have SD cards, which is what I have as backup in case I need to throw in my own to get expanded memory during a shoot. And then they use like the old photo cartridges, which I'm glad the X-T1 and the GH4 both use SD cards. I don't know. I th one of the cameras, or maybe both of them, either the GH5 or the X-T2 have uh, dual SD cards, or maybe both of them, which is a great idea. And at this point, you can get SD cards for cheap. If you're going to invest in a camera that's going to be a grand, you might as well just buy hundred dollar SD cards that are like 256 maybe I think they have one that's 512 gigabytes and just get two of them and set your camera to uh, raid or mirror those two SD cards that way every shot you take you have two copies of it just in case one of your SD cards gets messed up that's what I would recommend doing with it and then you always have one in there and then once you copy it over I throw all my photos up to the cloud when I'm done before I start to mirror them down, just in case I accidentally delete one by accident. It's just a habit that I've always used. And so whenever you're shooting a large shot like this, it takes quite a while for me to go ahead and get them in. I was going to try to post some last night, but until I got them all backed up and started to go through them and pick and choose which ones I wanted to post, uh, I had to make sure that I narrowed it down. And so now I'm doing the same thing from today's or yesterday's game. Um, as I'm recording this on Sunday night, uh, today's game, I had to let them back up and go through and then put them all in the cloud. And then I start to narrow them down. But I still have another thousand to go, or a couple hundred to go through, a thousand or whatever uh, photos to click through, see which ones I had um, in autofocus, which ones I centered well. And I'll be posting those online. So that's pretty much uh, my update on my cameras. I know I talked about it last week. Very impressed so far with the GH4. I love the Micro Four Thirds. I know there's been rumors back ever since it was announced that, hey, this, this technology is going to be outdated. No one's going to use it. It's going to die soon. So you're going to be stuck with the equipment. But if Panasonic, they might have found the niche here with the uh, video, 4K video in a mirrorless style camera. I know some people still use like the Canons. Uh, they can go ahead and use like the older models to shoot 1080p or whatever. But this camera for video is awesome. So I hope it sells well. I've heard that the GH5 is already backed up, back ordered because people are ready to upgrade. They want that stabilization for handheld shots because right now the GH4, that's my main limitation on video is I have to have it on a tripod, but most of the reviews and stuff that I'm going to be recording and posting, I can do that. I don't have like really any events that I'm going to be doing handheld for. I can just throw up a tripod, uh, set up my camera, record and go from there. But that's the next step. I do like the lenses. The lenses are cheaper than the Fuji. So if you're looking into a system you want to downgrade from DSLR, I, I've seen other people. I stand there at the softball game beside a couple other people taking cam or pictures. They have these huge cameras that I know are heavy. If I'm going to stand all day and shoot photos for two or three hours, I want a camera that I can easily ha handle and hold on to and throw around my back so that I'm not walking around with like the huge big thing that's going to hurt my back after um, using it for a while. And the Panasonic did great today. Very lightweight. I had a zoom lens. Like I said, it was able to reach down to the field. I stood up behind. So the way the NC State baseball or softball field was set up, they had a net that extended all the way around the backstop. And it was kind of a small stadium, so I didn't have the seats down the third or first base side to get down low. It was pretty much a hill that they had blocked off. So I had to actually shoot from up 
in the balcony. So I was pretty much full zoom most of the game for my close-ups. And a lot of them turned out well. I was a little bit higher from a perspective view. My camera shots are kind of down, but that was a limitation based on where I was. Uh, because I didn't want the net. I didn't want to shoot through the net. Some shots of the batters in the batter's box, just because I couldn't get down the third base line uh, when they were hitting or the first base line, they do have a little bit of the net or the top of the dugout in them. Uh, but they turned out well, uh, just for an initial test of the camera, able to go ahead and pump up the shutter speed and freeze a lot of the shots. So it turned out good. Like I said, I held the, just held it in for some of the pitcher stuff to try to get them in the windup. So I have a couple of those that I think I framed pretty well. And so I'll be posting them online. I know I've been talking about like expanding the site and getting like some more blog posts up. I've talked about some videos. I think last week I was going to go ahead. I launched my brother uh, playing junior high basketball, his highlights for that. And I'll throw a wild card this week since I've been talking about softball uh, video shooting or photography shooting. I'll launch my brother's junior high football video. So it's a little bit different in junior high. There's not a lot of highlights. Even in high school, you don't see a lot of like the crazy highlights that you get in college highlight videos or NFL. First off, you don't have the high definition cameras. And second off, the kids aren't able to like throw and run the ball as well because they're still learning the game. So it's not very exciting highlights. I did like the film. Uh, it was easy to cut up football because I, I think I know football the best. That and maybe baseball slash softball as a sport uh, compared to basketball because I played baseball and football. And so I cut up his video for that, just highlights for him. And then he ended up not playing in high school. So I don't have any other football videos of him. He decided to focus to get a scholarship on in basketball. So he focused on basketball solely. And that's will be my last. I have some other basketball ones of him. So I'll be posting those, but that'll be my last other sports one besides his basketball videos that I'll be posting up on YouTube. And with that, I've been posting some Science Olympiad stuff. And last week we did the Simple Machines. This week uh, we did a cloud a cloud observation. And so basically what we did was we went around, had to look at clouds, and over time just took a few photos and talked about uh, how much humidity was affected, how much the uh, humidity affected how much rain was in the cloud, and then the type of cloud also tells you how much rain is in the cloud. So you can look at the clouds themselves and kind of predict if there's a good chance of rain or not. And so for Signs Olympiad, we went around, just have a few photos of clouds, and we talk, I'm going to go ahead and post about the different things that we've done. And now with that on the website, so Socially Numb is hosted on GitHub Pages, which is like a free hosting open source platform that you can go ahead and individually post. That's where I post the blog for this podcast and just random different tech rats, rants and things like that. Now, personally, I had some of this stuff. So some of the content, like the cloud observation and my brother's highlight videos, I had on a portfolio website. Well, I've been looking into switching that, not really switching it, but I've been kind of mirroring it to pick up where Socially Numb has been kind of turning into my main blog as I podcast every week. And so to mirror that, I've been looking into using medium.com uh, as a mirror host because you get more exposure that way. A lot more people go there to read high quality content. And so some of the stuff I talk about on the podcast uh, might be covered there in like longer form articles. That's where I'm going to go ahead and post these photos of the softball game. I'm also going to post them on Flickr. So if you go ahead and read the notes for this release, I'm still going back and getting caught up. I'm still getting caught up because I'm still moving stuff into Medium and it's going to take longer than I expected. But eventually, this podcast will have all the show notes caught up for each episode. They'll be on sociallynumb.com. If you want to follow me on Medium or on Twitter or on Facebook, I have pages on each of those. I also have a Google, Google Plus page. I'll be doing a, a little bit better job um, promoting myself here in the coming future as I've been putting stuff up and getting stuff on Medium to get more exposure for the show. And it's free. It doesn't cost anything. I'm not running ads. I just have to post a high quality content on Medium. Hopefully people vote voted up or whatever. I don't even think they voted up. Just comment it and like and follow me. 
And so that is going to be my name on there is Richie Leahy, just like on Twitter at Richie Leahy. And you can also follow my publication. I have a publication on there for Southbound Sports. I've already started porting content for that. So that's going to be moved over. I'm going to have a mirror of Southbound Sports on there. And I've been doing some data research, which I might talk about on here. I know I've talked about I'm not just covering sports on here or whatever, but I have some tech and some research I've been digging into. So that might kind of cross pollinate this podcast, uh, doing more tech stuff. And so that's what I've been looking at. And so you might see a little bit more cross posting. I might be posting some links to that if I'm going to have other content, but I'll be posting the photos and I'll be putting the links. They might just take me a while because like I said, I have thousands of photos. So check back I'll, and I'll be tweeting them out. I'll be tweeting some out. So follow me on Twitter. If you want to stay up to date and see what the photos looked like once I get them up on Flickr, I'll add a link to the album for the weekend. And so I'll just create a photo album on Flickr. Maybe, well, it depends on how many I save from each game. I might have two different albums, one for yesterday or one for Saturday's game and then one for Sunday's game and then just have both of them up there. And then I'll put both of the links on the show notes page for this episode. And so that's pretty much it. The last thing, video games. I went through be Little Big Planet 2. I think I talked about Little Big Planet 1, how it was great for kids and whatever. Little Big Planet 2 was a disappointment. The story was weird. I mean, I, I was looking at it. The first one I got, they're like going to different continents, whatever. This time they were going like back through time, I guess, like Renaissance. They were like people were killing creativity and I just wasn't into it. In some of the episodes, it was a much shorter game. I was able to knock it out in basically like a few hours. And again, I wasn't doing like the create mode or whatever. I've just been playing through the story mode to beat some old games that I've had. And Little Big Planet 3, I've started. And it's kind of even just as weird as Little Big Planet 2. So if you're going to look into them, Little Big Planet 1 is one to get uh, so far based on my initial review. And go ahead. And now if you have a PlayStation Plus, PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4, I believe. PlayStation 4 has it. Little Big Planet 3, you can download for free this month. So make sure you go and do that. Check it out. Because that's the game I'm going to be playing this week and maybe next week. Depends if I beat it this week or not. And so go ahead, check that out. Uh, you can leave me your comments. Follow me on Twitter, Richie Leahy. And I'll be expanding, putting some new content out. And like I said, just trying to get the site up into tip-top shape. So if you have any ideas, comments, feedback, send them to me. And thank you for listening. And I'll see you next week.